The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. The finding and knowing of God are essential to finding and knowing yourself in the deepest and truest senses. God is both your origin and your destiny. God loves you, and the more deeply you understand that, the more deeply you can love God and love others yourself. A healthy sense of self-esteem or self-worth is crucially essential according to psychological studies. This does not suggest the cultivation of vain pride and arrogant egotism. It means rather a clear awareness of your own authentic value in the universe, which is independent of any other factor in your life. Suppose you're an engineer or a salesperson, a street sweeper or a cafe cook. Your value as a human being does not hinge upon how good a salesperson, street sweeper, engineer, or cook you are. Your value as a person is a gift of God. It is inherent in your very existence as a free will human being. You are, in that sense, the crowning glory of creation. God designed the very universe to facilitate and foster the spiritual survival and ascension of free will mortal personalities. And that is precisely who and what you are. God created you an infinitely valuable son or daughter of God. You are not a mere passing fancy or a sudden afterthought. You are here for a purpose. It makes absolutely no difference whether you're handsome or plain, homely or lovely. You are of infinite value, not because you are powerful, wealthy, or famous, not because you are talented or intelligent or skilled. You are of infinite value because you are of infinite value to the infinite God. Your true sense of self-worth must stem not alone from your abilities or accomplishments, your business ventures or social circle of friends. Your true worth stems directly from God, and nobody else can take that away from you. Suppose, for instance, that you are a criminal, that you have committed a murder or some other capital crime, and that the laws, the courts, and the rest of society have dictated that you are to serve life in prison or even suffer execution. What sort of self-esteem could you possibly have under such circumstances as those? Even in a situation as bleak as that, you could still maintain your inner life. And you could, if you would, dare to believe that the living God still cares for you, still loves you, and wants to rehabilitate you and restore you in mind and in soul, if you will but choose to permit it. You may lose everything else, but you still have God. You may have suffered the loss of freedom, prestige, possessions, and property, but you will never, ever lose God. God is the one friend who will never leave you and who will never, as the cattlemen say, cut and run. God will not abandon you or give you up or let you go from the special place he has for you in his heart. You will never lose it all because God will never let you down. You may have let God down a thousand times in a thousand ways, but God will never let you down. God loves you with a love that will not let you go. God is your father and your friend, regardless of who else is your friend or isn't your friend. God will keep working with you and wanting the best for you and loving you and encouraging you in your soul and comforting you in your heart as long as you will permit God to minister to you and give you faith and hope. And God will love you with an undiscourageable goodwill to the extent that even if you're hearing this worldwide radio broadcast in some dank and dismal prison cell on death row and you're due to die tomorrow, still there is hope for you. And there can be peace for you and forgiveness and a new attitude and a serenity of spirit for you because if God can't help you in a situation like that, he would not be God. No iron bars and steel doors can keep out the living God. God is right there with you. And with God, nothing, absolutely nothing, 
is impossible. God specializes in the impossible. When all others have given up hope, God keeps hope alive. When all others have given up faith, God can keep your faith alive. What good would God be if he only helped the wealthy, successful, and popular people? Jesus declared that a physician comes not to heal the healthy, but the sick. If God only cared about the lifestyles of the rich and the famous, he would not be a God worth worshiping. To be sure, God cares about people of prominence and prestige. He loves them everlastingly and wants all the best for them. God works with them ceaselessly to show them that there is more to life than a bankroll, a butler, and an entourage of all the right people. There are up and outs as well as down and outs, but God would not be a God worth worshiping if all he did was hover over the hors d'oeuvre tables at the cocktail parties of the socialites. God works the gutters too, and the skid row bars and the back alleys and the shacks and the shanties. God is the help of the helpless and the hope of the hopeless. And if what you need are help and hope, then God is the God for you. God has dealt with every sort of human problem since the beginning of time. God has seen it all and worked with it all. No matter what you've done, it's nothing new to God. No matter how far you've fallen, God has worked with people who've fallen farther still. If you've sunk so deep in the mud you can't even see daylight anymore, remember God is still working with the men down so far you're not even aware you're standing on the tops of their heads. God specializes in the seemingly impossible. That which looks beyond repair and beyond rehabilitation. Man's extremity is only God's opportunity. If you have just hit an all-time low, that is only the all-time opportunity of your lifetime for God to lift you up higher than you have ever been in all your life. All the more glory for God if he lifts you up from the very mire pit of your depression, doldrums, and despair. That truly displays the power of God. God can do that which human beings cannot begin to handle. God can solve the truly big problems. You can come to God with any sort of problem at all, but God specializes in the truly God-sized problems. So if you have a big one, you are in good fortune because that is the very sort that only God can handle. Remember that little girl, Jessica McClure in Texas, who fell down a well pipe? And it took a whole team of expert rescue workers to tunnel down and get her out safely. And the whole world watched the rescue effort on television and millions prayed for her. And a huge ovation of cheers and applause went up both in Texas and around the world when that sweaty, grimy, exhausted rescue worker staggered up out of the pit they had dug around that well pipe with that little girl in his arms looking like a lifeless rag doll. But she was alive and she survived and after hospitalization and surgery she was back running and playing with her friends and happy family once again. But why did the whole world follow her predicament on television and celebrate so boisterously when she was freed because she was really in deep trouble? If she had only been playing in the back alley and fallen in a plastic trash can and called out for help, her mother or father or the neighborhood children could have pulled her out none the worse and she'd have been playing hide-and-seek or skipping rope five minutes later. There would have been no TV reporters and newspaper photographers on the scene and the world would not have rejoiced ebulliently when she was freed. The reason all those things did happen was precisely because that little girl in Texas was half dead down a precarious well shaft where extrication was perilous and it was literally a life or death situation. And that may be exactly how you feel. As if you've gotten yourself into some predicament from which there is no rescue. As if your life has gone down the pipe. You're wedged in the dark shaft and can't even move and you can't get yourself out. All you can do is cry out. For help. And that is precisely what that little girl did. She kept crying out for help. 
She kept crying out, and the rescuers kept working, and the harder she cried, the harder they worked, and the harder the world prayed. And when finally they did get her out, she was greeted with hallelujahs of happiness and cheers of gladness and tears of joy. And no matter how far you've fallen down the shaft in your life, you keep on crying out to God. Maybe that's all you can do, but you keep crying out because help is on the way. And the living God will get you out because God specializes in the seemingly impossible. And God will pull you out and lift you up because you are God's infinitely valuable son or daughter. And God will go to any lengths to get you out of the hole and save your soul. And the very angels of heaven will be cheering you on and rejoicing at your rescue because they have always known what you're just finding out. That with God, nothing, absolutely nothing, is impossible. And that living truth can transform your life this very moment. For free literature on the spiritual life, if you're fascinated by these sorts of things, the possibilities, the new potentials, which you have not yet discovered for the living of your life, and how you can be renewed and invigorated inwardly by the Spirit of God and live forever, if you're fascinated by these things, and if you're not, you certainly should be, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI. Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. I've written Finding God and Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, Life After Death, The Fatherhood of God, The Brotherhood of Man, all of this literature yours free. No cost, no charge, no obligation when you write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. Box 3080 Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644 USA. That's for the free literature on the spiritual life. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.